the fucking helicopter. Welcome back to another RJ Talking Walking Dead. This one is for season eight, episode number five. Man, this was a very, very good dialogue driven uh, episode, especially with Negan breaking down with some emotional backstory that um, that was very, very intriguing, man. So first, before we get started, I just want to say thanks to everybody who's been um, supporting me so far for doing this weekly uh, breakdown of The Walking Dead, all the comments you guys been putting down. I try to respond as fast as I can to you and just having a conversation about it. It's really, really appreciated. Thanks. All right, so let's go ahead and get to it. episode number five. Starts off with Gregory, which is great the way this was going. I Because I didn't know what it was doing, you know, in the beginning. Started off with Gregory getting interrogated by Negan and the crew. And to my... I don't know why Gregory is still alive at this point, but I guess he adding some um, he adding some in between for Rick's and them crew and Negan and them and a little bit of comedic element on there. So okay, I know he can't last too much longer because his time got to be running out. The patience with Maggie and them and or the patience with Negan and them got to be coming to a head real soon. But anyway, that was a very good convincing argument that he made to stay alive keep his job to Simon and Negan um, but now I don't know if anybody noticed but you guys probably did but I thought it was very interesting when Negan got up when he was pissed off and started yelling at Simon like you're not backsliding are you you're not backsliding are you oh let me let me let me let you know who in charge you know right there that plays I think that plays into what he talks about later on with Gabriel when they uh, um, up in that room, when he started talking about his backstory, so I thought that was interesting. The other great part about that whole this whole interaction is this is the meeting Negan was talking about when Rick and them rolled up and started shooting out. So that was the uh, that was another point of view to see it from their side, which I thought was great because then you got to see everybody walking out the door at that at that very moment when Negan uh, first started seeing Rick. And them showing up in the thing so that was really really a good clever play Gabriel and Negan locked up in their room that was a really good back and forth for both of them Gabriel spitting out all of his confessions and truth about his past and what he did he was really just trying to make Negan you know relax cool down give me some of your your, your story maybe confess Maybe we can work this out as human beings, you know, just trying to save his ass for the most part, but at the same time still trying to be, a, 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 you know, a priest. And for the most part, he did pretty good. You know, he, he, he got the best of Negan. He got, he got away. He got locked up in that room by himself to get away from him. Um, he got a chance to talk to Negan. He, he didn't, um, and as a matter of fact, he got Negan to at least confess a little bit about what happened to him and what started off which I thought was very emotional and very well performed by Jeffrey Dean Morgan because man that face when he started to cry talking about his first wife his real wife it was excellent it was was very very good so we haven't heard anything yet about his backstory but I did hear that they might explore it in season nine which are probably going to be either a whole episode or two episodes, which would be great. Because we see now from this episode that he's going to have a lot to talk about from where he came from to how he became the leader of the Saviors. And what I think is that when he was talking to Gabriel in the room, he told Gabriel, Negan, he told Gabriel, when I first got here, the leader that they had, he didn't know how to fucking run shit. He didn't know how to make people strong. Blah, 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 blah. So he did it. He stepped up. He made it. I'm thinking Simon was the first leader of the Saviors. Then Negan showed up, took that situation, changed it around, made him his number two, probably because he had, you know, still some respect from him being the leader. And that's how we got to what we got to now, you know, with a whole bunch of more detail um, up in there. Because the backsliding of Simon and all that, like, we're not taking a step back. Now, it could be Simon was the last leader's number two instead of being the leader. But either way, I think it's probably going to be better if Simon was the leader. And then Negan came and took that over. So Then we go to Rick and Daryl. They out there acting like uh, two mad at each other brothers uh, on the field. They, they killed the last guy 
from the uh, from the satellite office, and he told them that everybody died except for the the like the three people that that made it out. Which I thought he had said um, the short haired woman died also, which I thought made um, Daryl pissed off even more. But it turns out no, that's not what it was. Um, so they those three made it alive. That guy died, but then in the middle of that, him and Rick get into it, and the fucking buck the guns all blow up, is destroyed. So the whole it was like it was like a big waste of time to get the guns, and now you don't have the guns. So it's like I don't know. They get into a scuffle, they start fighting like brothers, and then they you know they they work it out, right? So Daryl take off on the motorcycle, Rick start walking, and I'm like, what the hell, Rick? Walk? And then it makes sense. Yeah, he walking to the damn garbage pail kids to talk to them because he got all the Polaroids that he been taking to show. That look, this is what we've been doing, which is perfect too. Cause look, look, this is what we've been doing. You need to get on the team, okay? Nigga, them about to be done. When they get finished, either you're gonna be with us or against us. So I thought that's a good trick. Now, what Daryl's going, I, I have no clue. Maybe he's going back to Alexandria or Hilltop. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. But um, all the guns are gone. So neither Rick and them have the gun, or nigga and them has a gun. So the 50 cal is gone for the most part. Okay, then we get back to the Savior's headquarters. Everybody is um, stuck inside because all the zombies are all, you know, all the walkers are surrounded the building. So you got the top brass up in the room starting to go ahead and uh, fighting at each other. Just like Negan was saying to Gabriel that if I don't get back soon, the bad shit gonna probably start happening. People gonna start killing each other and you know, fighting for power, normal shit. And what do you know? Yes, it started happening. Simon trying to take control and trying to keep people calm and trying to keep it like come up with a plan or something to do. And then boom, all of the workers start coming upstairs. Just this is like any classic rebellion right here. It's hot. There's no there's no food. There's no water. There's no electricity. They pissed off, right? And it's only like five six of the people who's supposed to be in charge without Negan. And yeah. You know, they're a little pissed off because what's up with the power? And where's Negan? One of them shoots a gun. I forgot her name. She shoots a gun to, to calm down the crowd. And then right there, at that instance, it come Negan right back up in there. So that calms everybody back down. But he is totally livid at this point. So he got to have to get to the bottom of what the hell happened. And it seems like Dwight, it, they made it seem like Dwight might snitch on Eugene to make it seem like he had something to do with it, which would be, I, I wouldn't hold it against Dwight because you don't want to get caught either. So it's going to be one of those situations where, well, somebody got to gotta fucking take the blame for it and, uh, and you got more evidence than me. So I'm, I'm going to just do it like that. On another note, when Negan and Gabriel decided to, to make a break for it and run back to the, um, to the uh, main building, they did the old gut trick where they take a zombie and they take all the guts and put it on their body. Negan did mention, which was crazy, that can you believe motherfuckers get sick from this shit? I mean, it makes sense though. Now, Gabriel has done this before. He did not get sick. This time that he did it, it seems like it made him sick because you see right at the very end when Eugene went to go talk to Gabriel in there, um, he was shaking, he was pale. He was, he was like he's about to pass out with the flu. Like, I think those guts might have made him sick. And if that's the case, this might be the end of Gabriel. Either that or he faking it real good, which I doubt you can fake that. So, this might be the end of Gabriel. I don't know how they're going to play that. And then last but not least, the fucking helicopter. Are you serious? I mean, it was only one, there was only a few seconds, one scene. Rick sees a helicopter as he's walking. Where the hell is the helicopter coming from? Like, who has a helicopter? It cannot be, you can't tell me that's Negan. Because Negan did not mention not one time they had some kind of helicopter or something like that. Nothing. Uh, it could be It could be the Saviors, but I doubt it. Because they would have been used a damn helicopter at some point. So, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. That is world changing right there. If that's a helicopter. If that's good guys, if that's bad guys. That's going to be an overarching threat to both sides all day. So, yeah. We're going to have to see what's up with this helicopter because that was fucking crazy right there. 
That's probably the, the if you seen that in the apocalypse after so long you've been out there, you were like, holy shit, there is still hope. Or not. But still, something is flying. That means there is still hope somewhere. Man, so, but look, overall, this was a very excellent episode, very emotional, very dialogue-driven, very more, very much more informal um, in, in respects to Negan and what he brings to the table, who he is, who he was before all this craziness. So that's going to be the most interesting thing to see uh, either at the end of this season or next season because everybody's waiting to see what his backstory is in real life and how you became this this Bob Wire bet holding leather jacket wearing person of the Saviors, which is gonna be very, very interesting. Alright, well that's my rundown of episode five. Hope you guys enjoyed that. If you got some more questions and comments, like I said, always hit me up. RJ Talking Walking Dead for season eight, episode number five. Any questions and comments, hit me up below down there. Let me know how you feel, what you guys thought about this episode, and and did you like it? Because I did. And let's talk about that helicopter, man. So until next time, people, uh, peace. And we'll drive five in the air. Let's go! I got to be happy locked down. Cause I'm the hardest dude in the club right now. She got to be happy locked down. Cause she the best chick in the club right now. I got to be happy locked down. Cause I'm the baddest chick in the club right now. He got to be happy locked down. Cause he the hardest dude in the club right now. Look, I'm on the guest list. Walk